Today we'll be hopping into the Thinkorswim platform to play some pretty advanced options trades. And when I say advanced, I don't mean the type of option strategy that we're doing, like a vertical or a butterfly. I'm actually talking about how the trades get submitted. So that might be something like putting out an order to buy a call option whenever there's a MACD crossover, or whenever it crosses above the oversold line on an RSI. Now I've already made a few of these for stock in the past, but this is going to be the first one for options. And since I know it can be a bit confusing if you are new to this, and since we're switching to options contracts, we're going to start off pretty simple. For this one, we're going to be placing a trade to automatically buy and then sell a long call option whenever there's a crossover on the MACD. Now since that might sound a little bit confusing, let's come over here and take a look at my chart for just a second. Right up here at the top, you can see I've got a chart pulled up for Apple, and it is a one-year, one-day chart. Coming right below the chart, we can see right here I've got a MACD indicator, or the Moving Average Convergence Divergence. And what we're going to be doing today is creating an order ticket to buy a call option only when the MACD line, or this blue line right here, crosses above this gold line, which is going to be our signal line. So looking right here, we can actually see an excellent example of this. It looks like it happened on January 9th. We can see it right here when this MACD crossover happened. We would have put out an order to buy a call option. And then after buying it, I then want to exit that call automatically whenever the MACD line crosses back below the signal line. So right here, it looks like that would have occurred on February 17th. And right there, I would have automatically put out the order to close that same call. So ideally, we're automating the entire process, entering whenever there's a bullish crossover on the MACD and then automatically selling it when the reverse occurs. Just remember that you can use any study or combination of studies that you want, but this is going to be our example for today. If anything, this is just to give you an idea on what's possible to do in here. But please don't get too overwhelmed if it does seem confusing. That is completely normal. It's a lot to take in, but it is worth learning about. But now that we've got an idea on what it is we're going to be creating, in order to begin, we're going to need to first pull up an option chain for Apple by coming up here to the trade page and then specifically opening up the all products tab. Right here down below, we can now see all of the options expirations available for Apple right here. And now from here, all we have to do is pick out a specific expiration and strike. So for this example, let's go ahead and pick the expiration about 30 days out. Looks like that would be the 16 June expiration. And then once we've got that opened up, we can look in the list right here and look at a nice long list of all of the available strikes available for Apple. And let's just say we wanted to pick our strike as close to the current price as possible. And with Apple currently trading at 172.57, that would be the 175 call, which we can see right here is currently going for 360 by 365. So now in order to buy that one, we're just going to begin by clicking on the current asking price of 365. And you'll see that as soon as I did that, it automatically built out an order ticket to buy that call option right down here below. And if this was just going to be a standard order, this is where we would then come to fill out the number of contracts we wanted to buy the price we're willing to pay, the order type we wanted to use, and then how long we actually wanted this order good for. But in our case today, since we're going to be creating a much more advanced order and we want to add a study condition, we're going to need to start by coming over here to the far right hand side of the order ticket and clicking on this little gear icon. You'll then see a little window pop up over here on the left hand side and this is where we can now come to add our more advanced conditions. So these conditions could be based on things like time, on price, or in our case, a study crossover. So to begin, we're going to need to come over here to the conditions section right here. And what I want to do is find this little box right here that says symbol, and just come right below that and click in the empty box right there. You'll then see that it automatically loads the symbol of the stock that we're currently trading. So in this case, Apple, and that makes sense. But you could technically base this trade off of another stock symbol if you wanted to, or we could actually put the option contract that we're trading in there as well. Now for me personally, if I'm going to be doing this trade, I do want to base it off of the underlying stock itself rather than the option, but you could put the option contract in here if you wanted to. But now that we've got that set, we can now come over here to the next box over, the method box, and go ahead and click in that one. 
You'll then see that that opens up this little pop-up window where we can now specify what we want to happen before this order gets submitted. So we could base it off of the bid price of Apple, the asking price of Apple, or in our case, we could come down here and base it off of a study. Since we're going to be starting fresh, we'll come over here to the right and we're going to select the one that says edit. And that just means we can start over and put in here whatever we want. That will then open up a window that you might have seen before if you've ever made a scan within Thinkorswim. And this right here is where we can now specify our study parameters, where we can specify exactly what we want to happen before this order gets submitted. You can see here that at the moment there's already something in here. So in order for us to start fresh, we're going to come over here to the right and just go ahead and delete this out of here. Now that that's done, we can begin by adding our own condition. And remember, ours is going to be pretty simple. We're just looking for a bullish crossover on the MACD, and that's going to submit this trade. So to do that, we're going to come over here and add a condition over here on the left-hand side. We'll then get this little box up here, and this is where we can now specify what we want to happen. And again, we're just looking for the MACD line to cross above the signal line as our buy or sell signal. So beginning with the first step, we're going to be looking for the MACD value line. So we're going to come up here and select a condition. That's going to be a study condition. We'll then see a list of all the studies we could use right down here below. But in our case, we're just going to search for MACD right up here at the top in this little search box. Go ahead and find it and click on it in the list below down here. You'll then see that it pre-fills all of the study parameters for the MACD, and actually it defaults to the value line or the MACD line, which is exactly what I was going to look for, so I don't actually need to make any changes to this side on the left. But now that we've got that in there, we now need to specify what we're looking for, and we're looking for the MACD line or the value line to cross above, so we're going to come over here and select crosses above, and now we just need to specify what it's crossing above. So we'll now come over here and select a condition. It's going to be a study condition again. We're going to look for the MACD again. So same exact indicator, and we'll go ahead and select it in the list below. You'll again see it just pre-fills as the default parameters, and right now it's not what we want. Because right now it's saying we're looking for the MACD line, or the value line, to cross above the value line again. So that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. So what we're going to do is go ahead and click on this line, the value line, and we're going to instead flip it over to the average line, which is actually the signal line in Thinkorswim. So now that we've got that selected, the only other thing that you might change in this window is if we scroll down a little bit, and this little within box right here specifies how long ago that crossover could have happened. Now, if you're using this to trigger an order to go out there to buy or sell a stock or buy or sell an option contract, you're probably not going to change this ever. But if you're creating a scan, this could be something that you use. So I just wanted you to know it's here. Now, in our case, we're going to leave it saying one bar ago or one day ago. And we'll go ahead and hit save because we've made all the changes that we like. So now right here, we can see our study condition is in this window. And the only other thing that we might want to change is the time frame that it's looking at. So currently up here in the upper left-hand corner, we can currently see it is marked as D for day, meaning this MACD is looking at a daily chart for that crossover to occur. But if you wanted to flip that over to a one-minute time frame or a five-minute time frame, whatever it is you like to use, you could always click on this letter D here, and then this list below, just flip it over to the time frame that you like to use. Now in my case, I'm happy with day for now, so I'm going to go ahead and leave that be. Just go ahead and click away from that. And now that I've got everything set, I can just come down here and hit OK to lock in those changes. And now looking down here below, if I scroll down a little bit, we can see our study condition is in this little conditions window. And if you scroll down a little bit further, you can even get a nice little written description of exactly what this order is waiting for. So right here it says, submit this order above to buy one Apple contract, the 175 call, at 365 or better, only when this condition is satisfied. Only when the MACD line crosses above the average line will this order get submitted. And we're not quite done yet because this order that ends up getting submitted doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Right now it's saying that if that MACD crossover occurs, I want to put out a limit order to buy this contract at 365 or better. And the problem is we have no idea what that contract is going to be trading for whenever this crossover does happen. So to get around that, we could do one of two things. We could either scroll back up here to the top and just go ahead and flip this order type over from a limit order to a market order. 
So now whenever that crossover happens, we're just going to submit a market order and we're just going to buy that contract at whatever it's going for at that time. Now, for me personally, I do not like using market orders on options, so I would never use this one. And what I would instead do is flip this back over to a limit order. But instead of putting in a manual price, which is what this stands for, manual, meaning I'm putting in this price myself, what I'm instead going to do is go ahead and click on this. I'm going to scroll down all the way through this list here, and I'm going to link the price to the mark price at the time the crossover actually happens. Now that sounds a little bit confusing, so let's just go ahead and click on it and go through it for a second. You can now see that I've linked it to the mark price right up here at the top. Instead of putting in a very specific number, it just says the offset is set to zero dollars. So what that now means is whenever that MACD crossover occurs, I do want to put out a limit order to buy this call. But since I have no idea what that call option is going to be trading for, I want my order to go in at whatever the current mark price is, which is generally going to be the midpoint between the bid and the ask on that option contract. So just as an example, let's say at the time that crossover happens, this call option is currently trading for $2 by $2.50. That means that my order is going to go in at $2.25, the midpoint between the current bid and asking price. Now the risk with using this type of order is that I might not end up filling because maybe this option is moving very quickly and no one ends up taking me up on the midpoint and I don't end up getting the contract. But it also tries to protect me from overpaying for this option as well, for just taking whatever somebody's willing to sell it to me for at that given time. But now that I've got all that set in order to save it, we'll just come down here below and hit the save button. And that's it. There we go. We now have an order, which is only going to submit to buy this 175 call whenever there is a MACD crossover on Apple. But if you remember back, what I also wanted to do is automatically place an order to sell the same exact call option whenever the reverse happens, whenever that MACD line crosses back below the signal line. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is come over here to the lower left-hand corner where it currently says single order. By clicking on that, we can now specify the type of order that we want to use. And in this case, what I'm going to say is I want the first order, once it fills, to trigger the next order to go out there. And for this one, this is going to be a first trigger sequence, meaning the first order is going to trigger the second order. And now in order to build out that second order, we'll just come down here below and go ahead and right click on this green line right here. And I'm just going to come over to the right and click on create opposite order. You'll then see it builds out our order ticket to sell that exact same call option. And the problem with this right now is that it also fills out our default condition parameters as well. So to see what I'm talking about, if we come over here to this little gear icon on the right again, and go ahead and open that up. You can now see that over here on the left, it actually throws in that exact same study parameter that we used before. So it's now using that exact same bullish MACD crossover to now indicate that I want to sell the contract, which doesn't make a whole lot of sense. We do need to make a couple adjustments to that. So to do that, we'll just go ahead and click on the study parameter right here. We'll find study in the list over here. And now what I want to do is just edit the one that I currently have up. So I'm going to come down here and click on edit. And unlike before where we came up here and just deleted whatever was in here, since it's already pre-made for me, I just need to make a couple quick edits. So to do that, we'll come over here to the right and click on edit. And now all I have to do is actually flip this over from crosses above to crosses below. Because remember, all I'm looking for is the value line to cross below the average line to indicate that I now want to sell this call option. So now that I've made that change, I'll just come back down here below and hit save. Again, we'll hit OK. And I'm also going to come up here and leave this set the way that it is. So again, I'm saying whenever there is a bearish MACD crossover, I want to put out a limit order to sell this contract at whatever the mark price is at that time. So since everything looks good, I've got everything made, I'll just come down here below and hit save. And that's pretty much it. The only other thing that I might change is flip this over from day orders to GTC orders because I want them to work indefinitely. But now that that's set, I would just come down here below and hit confirm and send. And then I would hit send one more time if I actually wanted to place these. You can also see that if I do, to keep track of those, we could go back up here to the monitor page. And right here in the working orders, we can see that order to first buy the call option. And then if that happens, the order to sell it whenever the opposite occurs. 
You could also see those conditions that we set by clicking on the gear icon over here on the right, but that's how you're going to create the advanced orders within here. And again, you can base these trades off of nearly any type of study, condition, or indicator, but this is the one we picked for today. Now, hopefully after all that, you feel a lot more comfortable with the process, but if not, that is totally understandable. For those of you who are looking to learn even more about TOS or maybe even learn about more of these study conditions, you might find this next one helpful as well. But otherwise, I hope you all have a great rest of your week and I'll see you on the next one.